probably when this was written, um, it was still around that time when America was looking for its for its own great American symphony. I think Roy Harris III was considered uh, um, a step in that direction, but this certainly is far larger in scope and orchestration, got a huge orchestra. And um, as a statement piece, I think this is probably the great American symphony, mm. the first first great American symphony. Um. You mentioned the orchestration. There's a lot to manage. Uh, how does Copeland do, and how well how do you do Copeland? Well, for people who don't know the piece, it's a it, it's got um, you know two harps. It's got cellos, got large percussion, battery, piano. Um, piano. It, it's got two piccolos, not just one piccolo, two piccolos. You know, contra bassoon, E flat clarinet, bass clarinet. You know, so it's got it's got a lot of the additional instruments, specialty instruments. The thing about the piece that is really amazing is that it's super virtuosic for every single instrument even for the violins you know who, nor who normally are in a group you know and and not not horribly exposed i mean their parts are super hard but the start of the third movement for those first violins and then the second violins also it's so high it's another thing about the symphony it's a, it's probably the highest tessitura symphony ever written it's it's up in those you know sort of only dogs can hear that range practically, and so it's challenging. It's challenging for the brass, very heavy, but also very high. B major, not yeah, a friendly not a key. not a friendly key, um, and the fanfare to me always sounds a little bit strange when it comes in because it's higher in this symphony than than the original that he wrote. So Copeland wrote the fanfare for the common man. Uh, two years prior to embarking on this symphony, and he went back to the fanfare to use that really as the DNA for the entire piece. And when I do the off the cuff, that's what, well, I'm going to kind of walk everybody through that and talk about this idea of using a three-minute piece to generate a 40-minute piece. There's also some really nice use of themes in between the various movements. You mentioned the beginning of the third movement, where, where Copeland takes this really industrial theme from the first movement and turns it into the most uh, uh, heartfelt lament. This is the real secret to the symphony, is that he uses a very, very small amount of material. And it's all related in some way to the fanfare. And yet, the way he transforms it and disguises it and evolves it and spins it out is quite, is quite unique and exceptional. I mean, it's very Beethovenian, I think, in, in the cellular development um, that Copeland employs in this piece. But as a result, it feels extremely organic to the listener because you may not you know, recognize that that, vi that very high, quiet violin melody is the same melody you heard forte in the brass in the first movement, but you know somewhere you feel it, and and you you have a sense of, I think, natural cohesion in this piece. Thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for listening.